Hi everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name is Alisa and this is Fusion DIY. I'm so delighted that you've decided to join me today and I want to thank all of you who have subscribed to my channel. I'm almost up to 500 subscribers and I can't believe it. Never in my wildest imagination did I ever think that I would have that many, but I'm so blessed, so thank you very much. Today's video is going to be a couple of thrift flips of items that I found while I was out flea marketing or yard sailing and so I hope that you'll stick with me and enjoy the video and I'll see you a little bit later. You may remember this coat rack that I picked up at my local community townwide yard sale a couple of weeks ago. I paid two dollars for it and the reason that I purchased it initially was for those hooks. Those hooks if you were to buy them individually on Amazon are quite expensive. So I thought that what I would do is just take the hooks off and save the hooks, but it turns out that I had a coat rack in my booth that sold fairly quickly, and so I wanted to replace it with another one. So I decided to take these hooks off, repaint it, and I'm going to show you a really interesting finish. And then I would put different hooks back on. I'm going to save these hooks for a later time when I have a, a larger piece of wood that requires something a little bit heavier. <clears throat> Once I've gotten all of the hooks off, I went back and I gave it a good sand. The wood is fairly shiny, so I wanted to make sure that the paint had something to adhere to. <clears throat> So I'm giving it a good scuff sand. And then once I'm finished sanding it, I'm going to take some crud cutter and spray it down and get any residual dust and dirt and fingerprints, anything that would keep the paint from adhering to the wood. So once I got the crud cutter dried, I'm using this Color Place Black Onyx Flat Paint, and you can get this in Walmart. I believe the gallon was about $15 or $16, and let me tell you, I have used this quite a bit. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually going to give it a good paint. It doesn't necessarily need to be a, um, a good paint job because I'm going to be painting over it. This is a base coat. And so whatever paint you put on as your first coat is what's going to peek through when you crackle the paint. Now I'm taking some Elmer's glue and I'm giving it a very liberal coat of Elmer's glue. And I'm going to let that set for about five minutes, not much longer than that. And then, oh, I can't forget the knobs. Yes, the little knobbies. And then what I'm going to do is take some of my Waverly White chalk paint and I'm going to go over the board again, even though the glue is still wet. And I've got my hair dryer on standby. So as soon as I put the paint on, then I am going to go ahead and I am going to start to dry that paint with the hair dryer and you will see it begin to crackle right before your eyes. It's really kind of interesting how it does it. Here's a little bit of a close-up. And I apologize, I was trying to hold the phone steady and also hold the hairdryer. But you can see it starting to crackle. And once it dries, it really it looks just like that. In some cases, as it dries, it'll even crackle a little bit more, but the nice thing is that you don't have the flaking that goes along with crackled paint. So this is how you do it. And even though the paint on top of the wood might be dry, the glue underneath is not dry yet. So it's best once you paint it and crackle it to put it aside and let it dry for 24 hours. Then I'm going to take a coat of Waverly 
clear wax and I'm going to give this a good coat of clear wax. I put it on with my brush and let it set for a moment or two and then I'm going to take a rag and I'm going to wipe off any of the excess and that will just protect the paint job from any dings. And then once I've gotten the wax excess wiped off, I'm going to go back and I'm going to put new hooks on that I think match a little bit better to and are better suited to this size piece of wood. And the, the style of it as well. I also included hanging hardware with it and I put it in my booth. So there it is. Project number two is I'm going to be making a wooden tote with these leftover pieces of fence boards that my son gave me. The sides and the bottom match are 20 inches and the end pieces are 12 inches and then I've gone ahead and I spackled up the holes where they came off of the fence posts. So here I am putting together the bottom and one of the sides and what I'm going to do is put one nail in and I'm going to nail it to hold it in place and then I'm going to grab the rest of the nails and put them in. I did pre-drill the holes in the wood so that the wood would not split when I nailed the nails in. So I'm just going to nail everything in and you saw me put some glue on it and I'm going to do the same thing now on the other side. I'm wiping off the residual glue and now I'm going to put glue on that side and I'm going to put the other side of the tote in place and I'm going to take a nail and I'm going to pound that in and then I'll take all the others put them in and also hammer those in as well. I have a brad nailer I have not figured out how to use it yet and I'm sure that's going to make my projects go a whole lot faster. And now here's the end pieces. Now one of the problems that you deal with with fence boards is that sometimes they can be warped. So you kind of have to work around them being warped. And uh, so it takes a little bit of fading sometimes. And then I'm just going to pre-drill some holes so that I can make sure that they don't split the wood when I hammer them in. And now I'm going on to the other side and doing the same thing over there. Now I've gotten all four sides together and I'm going to paint it with the color place that was the paint that I showed you earlier and we're going to be doing basically the same technique where I'm first putting down a layer of black paint and then I'm going to go back and give it a layer of um, Elmer's glue and then we'll go ahead and paint over the Elmer's glue with white paint and we'll give it that crackle effect and you'll have an opportunity to see it crackle a little bit easier on this one because I was able to get the camera a little bit closer. So I got all four sides painted and I let that sit for a few minutes while the paint dried. And then once the paint dried, I took the Elmer's glue and I poured it into a tray and I spread it on all four sides. And with this, 
the more glue that you use, the more crackle that you get. I didn't want to go very heavy on the crackle, but I still wanted there to be some crackling effect. So I put the glue on the all four, all four sides and I let it set for just a couple of minutes, not long at all. And then I'll go back and take my Waverly white chalk paint and I will go over the sides with the chalk paint. And then you can see my hair dryer right there on the right. And you can really tell from this angle how warped the, the boards are, but that's okay because I'm gonna glue it and I'm going to put the top handle in and it, it's gonna look great when it's done. So here I am. I'm, doing the one side at a time and you'll see that it's just going to start to crackle. I really love this technique if you can't tell uh, and I was shocked just how quickly the items that I painted with this technique have sold. So obviously people really still do enjoy that crackled look, that farmhouse look. And now I'm going to paint this side and the other end, and I'm going to do the same thing there. I'm going to take my hair dryer and go to town with the hair dryer. You could also do this with a heat gun if you have one. I don't have one, so I'm using a hair dryer. But the heat gun, you just have to be careful that you keep the gun moving so that you don't bubble the paint. And then what I did was I let it dry for 24 hours and I glued the handle on. And then once the, the glue hardened, I kept the handle on because like I said, the boards were warped. So it was a little bit difficult to get the handle in the right place. So it was helpful to have the clamp, the furniture clamp, pull the two end pieces together to keep the, the handle in the right spot. So this is the finished look. This is before I put the handle on. Isn't that great? Don't you just love it? I also did give that a coat of wax and I let the wax dry overnight. And then I came back and I, I drilled the handle. Now the handle is painted black, so I did not do the, the crackling technique on that yet. But as soon as I get the handle screwed in, then I went back and I covered it in glue and I painted it white and I did the same crackle effect with it. And then here's the finished product. Project number three is this pretty enamel pot that I picked up at the local thrift store. I think I paid $2.50 for it. And um, I just thought it was so pretty. And so as soon as I saw it, I knew exactly what I wanted to do with it. I knew an autumn arrangement would be perfect for it. And it's definitely not too soon to start making um, products for autumn for your booth. So I figured I'm going to get started so that I have things as soon as August 1st hits, I'm going to start putting these things in my booth. So I've got some foam here and that I got at the Dollar Tree and these flowers I don't know where I got them I probably got them at a yard sale or a flea market 
uh, and I'm going to cut them up. I'm going to pull the leaves off because I want to put the leaves in place very strategically. So I'm gluing the two pieces of foam together and I'm going to start to put the flowers in. Now the, the key thing with anytime you're doing a floral arrangement is balance and scale. So you want to make sure that your flowers are balanced and you want to make sure that the scale of the flowers is not too big or too small for the pot that you're using. So I thought that these were just perfect and you'll see the pieces that I'm cutting off the stems I'm not discarding them because I am going to be using them further on in the project and you'll see that as I as I start to move forward with it. So little by little it's filling up and you know the thing is just to keep turning it to make sure that you have the right balance of flowers that you don't have too many on one side and not enough on the other and then I'm going to fill in with the autumn leaves and then also the leaves from the mums themselves and that's where the extra little cut off pieces come into play because I'm simply going to take some of those leaves and I'm going to hot glue them onto the stems and just insert them where I want them. And I try to put them or arrange them among the flowers to separate the flowers so that you can really get an appreciation for the differences in the color. I also put them at the bottom so that I don't have to put in any of the the moss. Um, you know, it kind of covers up the the foam that's on the bottom. And so I do use a lot of these leaves. And as I spin it, if I see that there's a hole somewhere or something just needs to be filled in or perhaps I need a different color or I need more color then I'll go ahead and, and add where needed but what I'm doing now is just putting in the in the leaves and trying to make a separation between the flowers so they don't look just like one big bundle of flowers And really, it's just a matter of playing with it. You know, it's going to be what's pleasing to your eye is what's going to work best. Uh, but I think that that pot is just, it's just perfect for an autumn arrangement. So I, I just continued to play with it and add flowers and add greenery until I was satisfied with how it looked. Now, like I said, I always keep my extra stems because you never know when they're going to come in handy and the extras that I had definitely came in handy with this project. So you can see there's a hole right there and I'm going to fill it with a yellow flower. So there it is. I think it turned out great. What do you think? Leave a comment below. And my final project for today is this end table that I picked up at the Townwide Yard Sale a couple of weeks ago. I paid $4 for it. It is very heavy, it's made of oak, and it's a very solid table. But one of the problems that this table had was that it was it had a good number of scratches, and I'm kind of zooming in with the camera so that you can see the scratches on there. And um, I wanted to make it, sand it down and make it 
uh, take the scratches away because I had a very specific idea in mind for this table. So with all of my safety gear on, I am sanding down the table. Now I'm using, I believe it was a 150 grit, and you saw the, the circle, that stain in the, the water stain in the corner there, the lower left corner, and I wanted to get rid of that. I wanted to get rid of the scratches, so I went a little bit aggressive with this sanding job and I was able to get the scratches out. Even though I was going to be uh, painting it and not staining it, I still wanted to get the scratches out so that they didn't detract from the work that I was going to put onto the table later in the project and you'll see that. So I got it sanded down and then once I finished with sanding it down, I actually took a paintbrush, an old paintbrush, and I brushed a lot of the dust off. Now I'm working in my garage and it was a very, very warm day. So uh, it was at best a chore to do this, especially with all of the, the respirator and the safety glasses and the hearing protection and everything else. So I am going to, here I'm cleaning it off, and I'm going to bring it back inside downstairs to my basement, and I'm going to start giving it a paint job. And, um, and so here I go. Now, I have to tell you guys that I didn't have the light on it, but I'm using the Country Chic paint, which I absolutely love. And now I have the light on, so you can get a better idea of the, the true color of the table. And I gave it one coat of the Country Chic paint, and then the next night I came back and I gave it a second coat. But I have to tell you, I love this paint. It is very creamy. It goes on very smooth. I was a Dixie Belle girl, and for certain projects I still am, but I really do like this paint a lot. So I gave it, I gave the whole thing one coat, and then I left it to dry overnight, and then I came back the following night, and I gave it a second coat, and in some places I gave it even a third coat, and you'll see that. But I wanted you to see how well it covers. Okay, so this is the second night and I'm going back and I'm giving it another coat of paint. Now the top looks a little bit darker that's partially because there was some bleed through and um, also partially because of the direction that the light was hitting it. So I went back again and tried to cover over some of that bleed through, but in the end, I did end up spraying it with a coat of polycrylic and then going back and painting the top a third time. But in the end, it really turned out beautiful, so I'm not, I'm not complaining. And you can see there's a little bit of a detail right there on the bottom of the apron of the table. So I got a very small brush and the paint, and I filled in all the way around. And then I got out my stencils and I put a stencil on it once it was dry. And I've used this stencil before and I really, really do love it. And the last item that I made using this stencil sold within a couple of weeks. So, um, and I think I'm gonna pull the the, um, 
the camera a little bit closer in a minute so that you can see what I'm doing. So I'm not using um, I'm not using a brush. I'm actually using a sponge to uh, put down this paint. And I'm pouncing, and in some places I'm actually swirling. But I usually start from the center, and I work my way out so that I don't have to be going back over a painted area too much. You can see the back of my light in this video. I didn't realize at the time that I was videoing it that you could see that, but it's all good. And the color that I'm using here is a combination of the Onyx Black and some of the Waverly White chalk paint to give it this gray. I didn't want to use black because I felt it would be a little bit too stark. So I use the gray and then I'll go back and distress the paint or the stencil once uh, the paint has dried a little bit. And I just feel like it's just a little bit more subtle and it just turned out more along the lines of what I was looking for um, for a finished piece. I did tape the stencil in place just so that it wouldn't shift as I, as I was stenciling. And here we go with the big reveal. Let's see how I did. There you go, I'll show you a better picture of it in just a moment. So I went back and I distressed the paint a little bit so that it wasn't so stark. And this is how it turned out, I just love it. So what did you guys think? I hope that you enjoyed this video. I think my favorite item, well, it's gotta be a toss up between the end table and the autumn arrangement that I made in the orange pot. I just love that orange enamel pot. And I knew it would be perfect for an autumn arrangement when I saw it. So I'm not sure which one I like better, but I hope that you enjoyed today's video and if you did, please give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that every time I release a new video, you'll be notified. Again, I wanna thank you for joining me today and I hope that you have an awesome week. It's very hot here in New Jersey. So I'm heading downstairs to do a few more projects, work on a few more things, and I'll have a video for you in another couple weeks. Again, thanks for joining me. Have an awesome week and God bless.